Kia ora koutou. Welcome everyone to our first Community Voices session for the year and today we're going to be talking about the concept of Tūranga Waiwai. Uh, my name is Anjum Rahman, I'll be your host um, for today and I'd like to start off before we do anything else with our whakatauki um, which you'll find on our website and I'm going to share that so that you can have a look at it as I read through it. So this Whakatoki was written especially for us by um, Professor Tom Rua at the University of Waikato. Ka hoka a ta hono i uta, ka hoka a ta hono i tai, ka rerea a ko fitipiti, ka tau ki ko winiwini, ka tau ki ko wanawana, tuturu o fiti whakamaua ki a tina, tina, huie, Thank you. So I'm a, a project co-lead of Inclusive Aotearoa Collective Tahuno, and Kiriana, who's here with us today, is the other co-lead. And our organisation was set up in 2019 with a view of thinking about how we can increase belonging and inclusion in Aotearoa and how we can do that by working with communities and bringing people together across different sectors to work together on issues that are common to us all. So at the moment we're working on um, two main collaborations. One is around media as allies and the second one is around te tiriti um, and it's called te toto kei roto. Um, so we have a newsletter, our social media, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the things. Um, and so if you would like to connect with us at any time, please do so. Um, and we'd love to keep you up to date with our work. I'm just going to now introduce our um, lovely panel who is here today. Um, so, as I mentioned, Kiriana Tafifirangi, who is our project co-lead, uh, Leo Magri, who is Arts Administrator for Mercury Bay Area School, also a musician and podcast host, Malu Malu Fuiyaba, who is the Marketing and Fundraising Manager for Belong Aotearoa, Helen Young, Researcher, Activist and Founder of the Migrant Scene Collective, and Yasmin Shah, who's a freelance medical writer. Welcome to you all, and thank you so much um, for being with us here today. Um, so I'm going to hand off very soon, but just quickly what is going to happen is that um, Kiriana will give us a little bit of background to the session, and then each of our speakers will um, talk for about five to seven minutes uh, on the topic of Tūranga Waiwai, and I will um, give them the questions that they'll be addressing today, and then um, we will have some time for your questions. So feel free to add questions um, on the on the Facebook Live, and we'll um, process those and um, ask the panelists as they come through towards the end. So, handing over to you, Kiriana. You're on mute. A tēnā koe, um, Anjum, I tōtō kōna ngā mihi, ka nui te mihi ki a koutou katoa. Um, yes, I'm Kiriana and I'm here um, today to, to start us off and to talk about Tūranga Waiwai for us as Māori, we understand it to be a place to stand and we also understand the importance that brings to us belonging, um, to connecting to a place. So for us, Te Tiriti and Aotearoa, it affirms for Māori their Tūranga Waiwai but it is also an understanding we see Te Tiriti as being a warm welcome also to others who have come to Aotearoa. And so we, we feel that Te Tiriti also in that invite gives others in Aotearoa also a Tūranga Waiwai, a place to stand here. And while we, are, we refer to ourselves as tangata whenua, Indigenous to here, um, others coming in, um, you know, they won't be tangata whenua, but they can have a Tūranga Waiwai, a place to stand. And that we believe that uh, Te Tiriti is a good start to look at this as an authority for others to be here. And to also, with being here and that invite and the right to be here, it's also how your roles, rights and responsibilities and reason also kick in as to how you belong here. 
And if we then understand that Tūranga Waiwai is about how it strengthens everyone's rights, um, and also in that understanding that we as New Zealanders, yes, we are all New Zealanders, but we're different New Zealanders. And we've got all sorts of magic talent and knowledge and understanding to bring to our mix to make life here in Aotearoa a more magical experience, a more inclusive one, where everyone does feel that they belong. And with, um, for Tangata Whenua, we've always been indigenous to, to here. And then in 1840, of course, the treaty was signed. And so on top of our indigeneity, we also then from 1840 on have citizen, citizenship rights. Um, and that came through also, you know, that through Te Tiriti. And so for us, um, you know, Taui, we have indigenous rights in their countries. Here in New Zealand, you certainly have your roles, rights and responsibilities to see Aotearoa as also a Tūranga Waiwai for you, as a place to stand and belong. And while uh, Tūranga Waiwai has been used as the Māori way of expressing our belonging, uh, we all know that um, one sense of belonging is a universal concept. So I really uh, look forward to our conversation today. And also, I just want to share a very quick story. As I mentioned, I don't have mokopuna and I'm hanging out for them. But I had this dream the other day. And, and in it was a mokopuna that I, you know, I haven't had, haven't had yet. But the, it was a toddler. And, and it was a little boy, funnily enough. And he said to me, he said, I, and about three, and he said, I've been listening to them stand up and give speeches. And they all start like this. They go, ear to iwi ear, which is sort of, you know, saying hello to the, to the people. And he said, and then they say where they come from. And I said, yeah. And when you go and you say ear to iwi ear, <laughs> you say you're from tiki tiki. <laughs> and so this little voice was going, tiki tiki, tiki tiki. <laughs> and I had a little giggle because I thought, you know, because me, my husband, we come from a raft of places. And at the moment... My two sons, one of their partners is a wonderful Argentinian woman that we love to bits. And my other son's partner is a Cook Island Māori that we love to bits. So who knows what the lovely mix of mokopuna uh, one day I will be privileged and honoured to have in my life. Ka nui te mahi, kia koutou, katoa. Kia ora, Kiriana. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm going to now hand over to Helen. Um, and the questions that all of our panellists are addressing today are three. First of all, one, what is your tūranga waiwai? Secondly, does this concept exist in your own culture? Yes and no and why? What, and thirdly, what words or icons do you use to describe this concept? So over to you, Helen. Okay, hi, kia ora everyone. Um, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm going first today because um, I actually have a family event I have to attend to that came up. Um, and yeah, so do we, shall we move on to the first question um, or um, would you like me to introduce myself first? Sure, like a little introduction would be great. Okay, so... Um, my name is Helen and I use she, they pronouns. I'm a feminist researcher, PhD candidate, community organizer in Aotearoa, but um, I'm currently um, in Guahan, um, Guam in Micronesia, um, which is where my partner is from. Um, and I'm currently doing PhD research about um, Asian migrant women in Aotearoa, and I am also the founder of Migrant Zine Collective, which aims to amplify the voices of migrant communities through activism, self-publishing and arts-based practices. Um, yeah, so moving on to, I guess, the first question. Um, when I first got um, invited to the panel, I guess, um, reading all the materials provided about the concept, I thought about um, the uh, quote by Bell Hooks, which I've used in my research to describe, I guess, the 
feelings and state around being an Asian migrant woman in Aotearoa. So I'm just going to read that out. She says, um, at times home is nowhere. At times one knows only extreme estrangement and alienation. Then home is no longer just one place. It is locations. Home is that place which enables and promotes varied and ever-changing perspectives, a place where one discovers new ways of seeing reality, frontiers of difference. One confronts and accepts dispersal and fragmentation as part of the construction of a new world order that reveals more fully where we are, who we can become, an order that does not demand forgetting. Our struggle is also a struggle of memory against forgetting. And that kind of, um, I guess, sets the tone for me as someone that, um, I guess, is born in Hong Kong, but also um, never really spent time there because my parents migrated before I was one. And um, yeah, I kind of have my roots and sense of belonging in Aotearoa as a um, migrant and settler of color. Um, and I also have my roots in Hong Kong and now in Guahan. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, a lot of my um, feelings around belonging and home and being grounded um, come from movement building and um, communities, my engagement in um, activism and just finding a place of belonging in that. Um, yeah, so I guess that kind of kind of answers question one. Um, and I guess, shall we move on to the second question? Um, so in the second question, asking, um, does this concept exist in your own culture? I couldn't quite grasp a similar concept, but I do, I guess the first thing I thought about when um, the brief kind of talked about the idea of um, feet and being grounded, um, I thought about how growing up, my dad would always um, tell me this Cantonese saying of um, how important it is to stand firm with both feet on the ground. And that was kind of the one of the guiding principles I had growing up and learning that I need to stand strong with my beliefs and um, kind of, yeah, it gave me a sense of like grounding and belonging in that way, in a way that's um, kind of like, symbolic of being in diaspora and being a migrant of color. Um, and I guess in the third question, um, what words or icons do you use to describe this concept? I thought about this one for a long time and I think um, for me, I would think about um, my zines as a kind of, um, or like, certain objects as kind of a grounding for me and a sense of home and comfort and also this morning I kind of thought about how having my feet on grass kind of reminded me of my childhood and um, just being grounded in nature was very comforting to me and a reminder of home in Aotearoa as well. Thank you, Helen. And I just want to um, express my appreciation um, of you being here when I know that you've got something else on. Um, so thank you. And I know you have to leave, so I hope it goes well. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Leo to answer the three questions. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's been a pleasure to do some research and to dive deep <laughs> within to reconnect and, and, and find some nice words to share. My name is Leo Magri. Um, I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm 33 years old. I've been in New Zealand for nine years. So that's one fifth of my life, which is pretty cool. So um, I work at the Mercury Bay Area School. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an arts administrator. I teach the drums. 
And I recently started a live streaming studio in town. So we are running podcasts and doing video productions, which is my passion. Um, I will try to put uh, the questions together. I will, I will, I will say what I, what I came up with and I hope it all makes sense. Uh, so when I was thinking about the first one, my um, Tauranga YY, Tauranga YY, um, Sao Paulo is a concrete jungle. It's, it's, there's not much nature in the area where I grew up. So I remember with my friends, we would talk a lot about our neighborhoods. So the neighborhoods was a very strong thing, you know, like different friends from different places. And we would always talk about the place where we were from. So we were writing songs because I'm a musician as well. So there was always a reference to the neighborhood. So when I went back to Brazil and one time in these nine years, um, I felt this great feeling of being back to my neighborhood. So that's probably one of the big ones for me. And the name is actually an indigenous name, which is Kangaiba. And uh, when I was a little bit older, around 18, 19 years old, I started going out uh, and there's this place in Sao Paulo called Avenida Paulista, which is the Paulista Avenue. It's a huge avenue, the biggest one in Sao Paulo. And uh, all the streets that go along, that crosses the avenue, they have all these quirky alternative uh, um, nightclubs and, and pretty cool cinemas and, and theaters. So I was studying social communications and that was my hub. That was the place where I would go with my friends because we were all from very different places of this huge city. So we would meet in the, um, in the center of the city. So Paulista Avenue, it's definitely a, a very meaningful place. Um, for me, I, I feel connected to the place. I have beautiful memories. I dream about the place. Um, and obviously, as I said, I've been here for nine years and living in the beautiful Coromando. So um, when you're a traveler, things happen and you, you move. But for some reason, I've been in the Coromando for eight years. And now I can look back and understand that <laughs> probably there's something pulling, keeping me here. You know, so I, I created, created roots in Fitsianga. And one of my favorite places here, it's the Tefanga Yahe which the colonizers named as Shakespeare Cliff. Um, but it's one of my favorite places to go to. And just when my mind is wandering and, and, and I need time off, I go there and it's a pretty high place and I feel great there. So I feel like that place pulls me as well. <laughs> um, the concept in my own culture. Well, I, I was trying to think about a word or something that would mean the same. And it's beautiful for me to, to read a Maori concept because they can mean so much. They go so broadly sometimes. And I love that. So it was not just a, like a physical place, but also a, a, an emotional connection. Or So I was trying to look for, for some words in Portuguese. I couldn't come up with, with one concept that is so similar, but in Brazil, we have this thing with roots. People say the roots of the time. Oh, my roots is there in my state, in my city. So it's a huge country. We have 26 states in Brazil. And each one of them, I would say, are like the, the sizes of some countries in Europe. So I think if you ask each Brazilian, they will give you a different idea of that concept. But for me, um, I believe most people connect much more with tradition than actually a place. So for example, Brazil had 40% of all the slaves that came to the Americas um, at the slavery time. So that brought a huge African influence to our country, you know? So I would say that we have this Afro Latin influence, this, this, this beautiful culture there that not for the best reasons, but obviously, you know, it, it, it made who, who we are. Um, and I think, most people would relate to that. Brazil has a lot of Afro religions and the foods, the traditions, the dances, it, it's, people love to celebrate life there. And when I look back and I, under, and I analyze that, I'm like, wow, it's, it's very rooted in, in our African uh, influence much more than our indigenous influence, which is a shame because we should be um, focusing on that as well, right? And the concept and, and the words, um, 
again, I think people, re, uh, it's a very religious country. So people like to, to, to give that idea of like, that's my hub. That's, that's where we're from. That's where we belong. But um, I couldn't, I, I don't know, like I couldn't think of specific words. I just think um, it's a shame that we're losing so much of that indigenous uh, uh, amazing influence that we should have. Brazil has 200 million people and the, popu the indigenous population is only 0.4. So you can tell that after this, uh, uh, since the 500, uh, the 500s, when uh, the 1500s, when when the, the colonizers came to Brazil and started this process of exterminating and getting rid of indigenous people, now I can look back and understand how like school didn't teach me much about how beautiful that time, you know, like those people were relevant to us. So I just hope with this, that some people from Brazil or some people from other countries are, are watching. I just hope that people go deep and, 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 and dive and, and, and try to find those connections as well, because they are there, but sometimes they get lost. So yeah, I think that's, that's what I came up with. And I, I hope it all made sense. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leo. That was really lovely and um, really appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Malu. Hello everyone, um, Malu here from Bilal Aotearoa. Um, I guess thank you for the invite and I did kind of be like, oh no, someone else is better, better equipped to talk about um, this than I am, but um, so I've really like real imposter, imposter syndrome going on right now. Um, but I guess Bilal Aotearoa, just to give you a brief, um, I'm Mark Holmes and fundraising manager there and Bilal Aotearoa is around driving uh, transformational change to improve inclusion, belonging and well-being for refugee background and migrant communities. Uh, so to the first question, uh, what is your tūranga waiwai? Um, I guess initially when I was thinking about it, I was struggling to think of a place um, as, I, as I did move around to Auckland a little bit, um, renting life. Yeah, um, but when I started to look at it more and understand, I guess, the concept a bit deeper, thank you to the team for sending through those resources. Um, I guess the understanding was that, um, as Leo mentioned, it's actually more than just a place. Um, it's it's a it's a much broader concept around belonging, uh, connection, empowerment. And so I started thinking, okay, where do I feel? Where do I feel that for me? What is my tūranga wai wai? And I guess the first thing that popped up was like family, and that really helps when you don't have a place. Um, that it's the people around you that kind of make any place you are, you're Tūranga Waiwai. And so it's like my sisters, my cousins, my parents, my aunties, my uncles, and um, I'm someone so um, guaranteed to have a huge family. And so they are, the, uh, I guess, my Tūranga Waiwai and give me that feeling of belonging. Um, but then I think that also extends to like my friends who um, I guess another part of my family and I guess these guys, are, these people are my foundation. I, I tend to talk really fast and people have told me that in the past. Um, so Anjan, feel free to like wave at me and I will slow it down. Um, I guess the next question was around, um, uh, does this concept exist in my own culture? Um, and again, uh, I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the beginning, but um, I, I definitely don't speak on behalf of all New Zealand born Samoans, but I think for me personally, that there, what, there is a sort of a severed connection to um, my customs and my general, genealogical <laughs> frameworks of belonging, such as birthright, which, um, which I think you have, I guess, easy access to if you're in the place that you're from. So um, I'm in by no means an expert. <laughs> um, and so I looked, I guess the easy thing for me to do was like, okay, think of the translation of the word. And I think the closest thing I could think of, um, thanks to my fans, was tulanga vai, which means footprints. Um, but it's not exactly the same concept. Um, and so I was like asking family even more. I apologize if you can hear that. Um, was when I think about, I can move if you can or talk really loud. Um, 
as in I think about Tūrongo Waiwai, about being a foundation and a place to stand, is that it could relate to the word, um, the Samoan term that we have called whaasinomanga, which is about identity in place. And it's like having an understanding of where you're from and that where you are now is the foundation of where you're belonging and empowerment and connection can come from. I know like similarly, um, Samoans do have a thing that's like the pepeha, which is, um, I guess the whaasi sino manga is like your closest thing to it, is where you would say um, where you're from, where your parents are from, where your grandparents are from, and you could go keep going if you know that, I don't know that, but um, many of my family do and they can they can keep talking and talking. Um, and I guess then under that, you would get other concepts um, that come from like, I guess the village concept um, that we have in Samoa, where you have Fa Samoa, which is the Samoan way, Fa Aloalo, which is respect that can kind of flows throughout um, our culture. So I, do, I think that's kind of the closest concept we have to Tūranga Waiwai. Um, I will jump to the next one. <laughs> Um, around, I guess, what words or icons um, do do I use? Yeah, do I use? Yes, do I use to describe this concept? Um, I think uh, sense of belonging is probably the one that really resonated with me. And I think for me, when I think of that, I think of like the tree, and I think of the the many different um, ways it goes up, but also the ways it goes down. Um, and I had, I guess, previously, in, as I was, you know, your transition to moving jobs, you kind of do your, like, your end of peace day, and, um, and I think for me, it was, um, I had talked about standing on the uh, shoulders of giants, but I think, um, I think I like the notion of tree more, because it's not so much you're on top of another, you're connected, and, um, I think it's really hard to do a direct translation from one to another. And I know Leo mentioned it as well, that like it's really hard. And so my mom was also like, oh, there's metaphors and stuff. And that um, I think one of the two of the ones that I'll say really quickly um, is o lupe se vao ese ese a fui fui fatasi, which means we are different parts of the forest but connected in one course. Uh, yeah, that's me. Um, I, uh, I probably have run out of time, but yeah. I will put in the quote for the metaphor for the other one in the chat. Peace. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Malu. That was lovely. Thank you for sharing. Um, and just a reminder for everyone, if you do have questions, put them into the Facebook comments. Um, and thank you for that. We've had a, um, a lovely comment from one of our participants reacting to what Leo had said about um, returning home and the feeling of your neighbourhood that connected with them. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Yasmin. Sure, thanks, and, um, and and thanks for inviting me on. And uh, yeah, I feel a bit like Amalu in terms of the whole imposter syndrome. Um, but um, this is fascinating to me because I, I read all the kind of stuff that you sent and what Tango Wai Wai means. And um, I think we've been having, Tim and I, my partner and I, husband and I, have been having these conversations for a while because we've moved around quite a lot. So where do you feel your kind of belonging? Like where physically, you know, do you feel like you belong? And I think I, I struggle with that. So I'm half Pakistani. I'll certainly introduce myself. I'm, so I'm Yaz. I'm half Pakistani, half Irish. Um, I'm a medical writer. So I write about diseases and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm work from home. So I'm not out in the community a lot um but I was brought up in London um and then we've moved to Sri Lanka and we've sort of been all over the place so yeah, where is this kind of if we if we're talking about our footprint where we stand where is this physical and, and I'm, I'm not for me personally I'm I'm not sure because a lot of that what plays into that is how you are accepted by the people around you right and if you're not if you feel like you're not accepted that makes it really difficult to say I'm here you know I have a right to be heard. Um, this is my place because, you know, that, 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 that's hard to do. And I think like I'm a Muslim um, and, um, you know, London in the 80s was quite difficult for a lot of sort of non um, sort of English kids. And so that kind of feeds into it. But I also know that if, you know, if the cricket's on, I'm supporting England or, you know, so there's so it's. You know, it's it's a uh, it's all a bit it's all a bit confusing, really. I find it a, a bit confusing. And then also, like, or if 
if, if Pakistan's playing in the cricket, then I'm half Pakistani and I've never been to Pakistan, right? But a lot of my friends are from Pakistan and I grew up in a community where we kind of were quite um, inclusive. Well, in, in the sense that we kind of just stuck together because we kind of knew each other. We knew like what the culture was, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of sort of built walls around ourselves. So I guess when those, when those kind of sporting things come up, it's very, I'm very Pakistan and, and, I'm, and I'm supporting those, um, you know, I'm sort of supporting that team. So, and then obviously we moved to Sri Lanka and we were out in Sri Lanka for a while and I'm obviously not Sri Lankan. Um, but I, I did feel a real affinity for the, the culture and the country because of the friends that we had. And some of those cultural practices were very similar to what I'd experienced at home. So, you know, I, so there, I, I do feel like if when we go back, there, I feel very comfortable in moving around. I feel like I can be myself. I feel like, you know, I, I can. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like like it's it's home it, 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 it is home and then being in in um being fortunate and privileged to be in al Sarawa as well um and just kind of we've just moved to Dunedin which I, I really love um again I think like to, to like say to to plant your feet firmly on the ground I feel like you need to be benefiting the community that you live in and I think that's a real for me a real important part what can I give to that community if I'm sort of taking up space if you like or if I'm here what am I giving back to that community um which kind of sort of I feel like justifies my for my reason for being here what so I'm sort of trying to trying to find that so I don't know like if it's a place for me but I think a lot of things feed into belonging it's about the people that you know having you know that familiarity um you know um you know that those that kind of common ground um um being able to contribute I think all of those things kind of feed into a, a place to stand um so yeah I'm not sure about a physical thing I'm still I'm still working that out I'm not not too sure to be honest with you um, I'm just trying to find. Sorry, the, the do we have some? Do, do we have a similar concept in my own culture? So if I, you know, I was I was doing some research searching to this because, to be honest with you, my parents never. I, I think they were so. I think they were so um, different in the UK that they were very concerned that they didn't want to impart that difference, and that's such a shame because it's actually a benefit, right? So I think they were scared that putting so much of like this kind of even though we were in these particularly Pakistani culture but being very f sort of full-on about it would make us different and stand out look we stood out anyway like there was no, even on white skin we still stood out um so I don't know about the, the the concept the only thing I can kind of think there's an Irish saying and it says may the right road may the road rise up to meet you right and that is basically about basically wherever your journey is may there not be obstacles in your path may it be an easy um, um journey for you and there's an islamic thing as well that i find you know that i also it's not it, it kind of ties into it the, the saying is be in this world as if you're a traveler right so a lot of that is about not carrying a lot with you but when i travel when i go to places i try to make sure that i try and understand the culture that i'm in the, the, you know those kind of nuances not to offend people to be really you know be really aware of like that's the culture I'm coming into and I need to be respectful of that and um, I need to understand that so and that's how I feel again it, it's that, that kind of concept of you can belong if you you're flexible and you understand and you try and be part of that that culture it, so I, for me that's kind of I know it's all very confusing I hope you're all following um so, so yeah I think and I don't know about icons and like I couldn't really think I think the thing about planting your feet somewhere where you stick your feet whether it be with friends in a friend's home or you know um I think for me that kind of that kind of is is how I see it oh it's all very confusing actually to be honest with you <laughs> you know I think belonging is so um it, it's so um you know it's so different for different people and but I love this this Maori concept Oh, it's just, it's just beautiful. And, and it really, it, it really does give you a sense of identity. And I think for a lot of us coming from different cultures into different countries, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's just, um, it's really nice to have something so like there for you to understand. Identity is, is, is really 
quite a difficult thing, um, uh, you know, to kind of get your head around. Um, and when you're in a different country, that becomes even more so. So it's nice to have these concepts in the country that you live in, these indigenous concepts, because it helps you kind of figure it out. And there you go. I'll keep quiet now. <laughs> Thank you, Yasmin. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you. Um, such a varied experience. Um, and finally, I'm going to hand over to Kiriana. Well, that was great hearing from all of you. Very invigorating quarter all there, Yasmin. Um, I, I just, yeah, for me, and I think Tūrunga Waiwai, like because I connect to so many iwi and hapu and, and I also have other connections outside of my indigeneity of being Māori, um, it is about place, it is about people. And I'm just going to share with you, I live in Tolaga Bay most of the time. I'm in Wellington at the moment and Tolaga Bay is up the East Coast. I've been there for nearly 30 years and it is where my mother comes from. And her whanau name connection to there is actually Thatcher. So there you go. You know straight away where that name may have come from. And so um, and so that's how we connected to Tolaga. So I've actually lived there for 30 years. Um, and then I mentioned earlier Tiki Tiki. Now Tiki Tiki is a place I have never ever lived. We lived across the river in Ruatoria and Waiamatatini. And so and yet, Tiki Tiki is our marae, Tiki Tiki is where my father, my brother and sister are now buried, unfortunately. My mother and father were married there, a sister and a niece were married there. I've never lived there. And yet, probably, I, I feel a stronger connection. Well, I wouldn't say stronger, but I know that I feel like I have more authority to speak and stake my claim and speak on behalf of my Tiki Tiki relations more than I feel I can in Tolaga. I still feel, after nearly 30 years in Tolaga Bay, if someone came and said, hey, look, you know, what does Tolaga Bay, or can you do this to, to prove that I'm connected to Hawati? I sort of think, oh, I don't think I'm qualified. And I send them off to someone else who I feel is more qualified, one of my other relations. But if anyone come to me asking me the same thing about Tiki Tiki, I'd have no qualms about staking my claim and thinking, yep, I've got the authority to say that. So I think it does change. And I came back from Wellington to Waipiro Bay in 1990. I was principal there. My younger son's name is Parorangi and our tribe is Ngāti Paro. And so when he came back, he was three. And of course, a lot of our waiata and haka have parodangi in them. And he was the hair raising little hell's angel, little mischief guy, you know, hooning around. But every time he heard his, this name pop up, he'd stop and puff his chest out like, oh my gosh, they're singing about me again. And, um, and so for that brief moment, they said his name, he'd behave. Um, and so when we got back to, to Waipiro Bay, funnily enough, we arrived there. I'd gone back with my two children on my own. My husband was in Wellington and I was like a solo parent, two young children and first time principal. So nightmare stuff, really. And then I thought, what have I done? I got there and I thought, what have I done? And we were invited down to the local marae and Sandra Edge, one of the netballers of New Zealand, she was taking a coaching session. So they invited us down there for kai. And when we got down there, my little three-year-old darling was being himself and hooning around. And I'm there trying to put on a good impression and have him behave. And um, one of my aunties uh, there saw me doing that. And she said, Kiriana, she said, leave him alone. She said, he's all right. He's home now. And when she said that, my heart just settled. And again, while I had never lived in my Petal Bay, my father's whanau were also, his, his, he has brothers and sisters who are buried there. Um, but also, we were all born in Waipiro Bay because anyone born up to the end of the 50s, we were born in Waipiro Bay because that's where the maternity annex was um, for our area. So, yes, it does change. In terms of icons and places, my mum's also from Hicks Bay, so there's a waterfall there. We call ours, we go there, we take girlfriends there, we take our kids there, you know. Um, it's a place of, of, of just a nice connection. But for me, I love the beach, and so I'm, I'm pleased that I live near near the coast so when I think of the beach I think of that as being my healing and in terms of of me and where I belong I feel very lucky to have had so many wonderful people be part of my raising me disciplining me clipping my ears but 
for all of that always loving me. And I never felt that anything I did made them love me any less. Um, and so I talk about that as being a koroai of love, a cloak of love, a koroai of aroha. And I carry that with me wherever I go. And, and when I'm anywhere, I sort of feel as if um, when I'm in moments of stress, and I have been one time in Australia, I was feeling very stressed. And, and all of a sudden, this very feather-like cloak seemed to fall around me and seal me off and keep me safe. And I thought, ah, this is my way of love coming in and kicking in to protect me when I most need it, even though I'm in a different country. So that's, that's how I refer to it. And I think it can change. We I want to connect at any given time and call my tūranga waiwai, depending on people, place and feeling, it can change. It can change. And so um, I just want to say too, it is about connections. And I have, um, in 2008, um, I was working in a, in, a, in, a, in a project and I had an Irish girl who was working with me, Quiva. And she went back, you know, she, and so that was 2008. Um, and in 2009, she left Aotearoa. And since then, we've maintained a contact and she's now got two children who are toddlers and I've kept up this contact with her. So we've had this ongoing, I almost feel like her children, her, her children are kind of my mokopuna. And every year we have videos and I send them these New Zealand books and everything. And so I think it is about connect. It is about relationships. And I think that um, uh, I mentioned to you about my uh, younger son and his Argentinian partner. Now her name is Anahi Maturana. And my mother was hanging out to meet her. And she, my mum's really impatient and she was trying to say, oh, I better put on a good impression when Anahi comes, rah, rah, rah. Anyway, before um, my son and Anahi turned up, my mother, she's 93 next week. And she's very, you know, she went and did some research and pulled up something on indigenous people in Argentina and found out that there was an indigenous group called Anahi. So poor old Anahi, when she gets in the door, gets interrogated about this. Um, but, you know, all I'm saying is this is all part about how we connect. And the fact that mum found this indigenous, oh, you know, and it was really great because I guess it made my mum behave too because I was a bit worried about how she would be so I think I just um in my mumble jumble of, of caught it all then I hope you've made some sense of it um but certainly um for me it is about always feeling um loved and cared for but for me just so grateful that through all that love and care from a range of people they've allowed me no matter how stressful that's been for them they've allowed me to be me so kia ora, kia ora. thank you Kiriana. What an amazing um, group of people and sharing. Thank you for that. I'm just going to quickly go through a few of the comments that people have been putting up on the Facebook. So um, someone talking about struggling to find um, their home and because they're away from their birth country, they don't feel like that's home either, which um, I can relate to. And uh, another person also um, talking about being from Pakistan, but their parents also being immigrants to Pakistan, so struggling with that notion of belonging to a country um, and, and talking about that belonging coming from arts, music, comedy, people, family. Um, and uh, another person talking about their childhood home in rural Queensland. Um, and so in terms of a physical place, that would be be the feeling of home um, but but the social environment feeling you know a bit alien so yeah I, I'm gr great that people are, are connecting to this topic and feeling so we'll we'll move into kind of a Q&A discussion session um, for myself you know I was also born in another country in India but I left when I was less than two got to Aotearoa when I was five and then have stayed put in Kirikiriroa Hamilton since then and so there hasn't been that sense of shifting and movement but my connection feeling very much to here um, which is interesting and I found it really interesting um, for the people that have moved around a lot whether it was the rental places or the different countries. Um, so the, um, one of the questions that we have here is, um, and, and uh, any of our panellists feel free to, to answer the question, um, 
And I think uh, this is this is a question from the audience. Does it have to be a physical place, and can it be more than um, one uh, uh, one's own place? I think it means, and can it be intangible? So is Tūranga Waiwai more about a specific place, or is it more about an intangible concept? Um, and I guess um, you know there there's a Maori concept that's tied to place. But for what a lot of others of you have talked about, because place isn't, you know, Leo, you did talk about a specific place, but for others of you, place isn't quite there. So just any thoughts people would like to share, feel free to um, unmute and chip in. I mean, for me, it's not a place. I think I've probably made that clear. And I, and I don't think it, it needs to be like, listening to Kiriana and, and, and like some of the stuff that you've talked about. Um, I, I think it is, it's just about where you're loved, where you feel like you can be yourself. And, and sometimes that's not a physical place. It could be that the politics or the way the country is doesn't make you feel like that. So within a group of friends, your family, where you can be heard, where you can be seen and, and feel safe to be yourself, you know, of course you would love that to be in a particular place and, you know, wave a flag and say, but for many of us, because of particular experiences and because we have moved around, we're not in our, you know, where our parents are from, we're in a different country, we, we sometimes don't find that. And so I think if that's what grounds you and, and makes you, you know, feel you belong, then that's, I guess, I guess, from somebody who doesn't know much about it, that will probably be your Tanga Wai Wai. Thank you. Yep, mm. Leo, please go ahead. I remember when I came to New Zealand nine years ago, I went to Auckland Art Gallery and there was this big sign. I don't remember the exhibition. I don't remember who wrote the quote, but the quote stuck in my mind and it was, um, I'm a seed of this land. I would never get lost. And I carry that with me and I still carry it. Um, so when people ask me, oh, do you miss your family? Do you miss your country? Like, it's a bit obvious, right? Of course, you, you're going to miss the place where you're from and the people. But uh, my exercise during these years was to always tell myself that wherever I go, there I am. So there was another thing that when I was thinking about what to say today, I was, I was relating to it all the time. I'm like, well, it's, it's rooted also within some kind of connection that luckily as humans we cannot explain yet but we can feel it so i love this idea of being comfortable wherever you are and not dwelling in that feeling of like missing you know like longing is beautiful but like that missing feeling can can hurt you you know so uh i like to ground myself wherever i go and i make family with the friends and the people who are around me so i like the emotional and the more like, you know, the, not the concept, not with the location itself, but also with, with the feeling of being comfortable with yourself. And then it doesn't matter where we are, we'll, we'll be fine. Thank you. No, that, that's, um, that's lovely. Um, one of the things that I was thinking, and Kitty, I know when you talked at the beginning about a place where you have roles, rights, and responsibilities, and that being connected to Tūranga Waiwai. So when you don't have that set of concrete places like how then do you talk about the place you're in and how do you feel into your role rights and responsibilities which is not a simple are question. you asking me feel free to answer it's a I, 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 I think I think Yasmin gave a very good response to that you know um when she talked about it's about we where, where you are and how you make a connect and how it's a, it's that wherever we go there is a responsibility to kind of you know be respectful to give and get from it um and to you know to, to see how I mean I always think when I go just to different places and to different projects or to work with different people I always say I always preface it with you know I'm here to be as useful as I can, because I always feel that in anyone I meet, whether it's for five minutes, for five hours, I want them to hope that when I leave, that the time they've had with me, and my time I've been there, it's it's been good, it's been useful. Um, and, you know, my mum comes from a long social worker background, and that's something she, I remember her saying, is that, you know, always think about 
with ever with whatever you've done and whoever you've been with, has it been worthwhile? Have you actually done something useful and been of use to that to build on it? So that's that's my fakaro at the moment. Awesome. Just wanted to hand over to Malu if there's anything you wanted to add to that. Uh, we have another question if you'd rather address that one. Uh, yeah, everyone's up to that. Okay. Good. Awesome. Okay, so then the question that we have is what would be one thing that would increase your current sense of belonging? Anyone want to jump in with your one thing? Um, for me, I mean, I feel a, a strong sense of belonging myself. For me, what, what would increase it is for other people to affirm that sense of belonging for me because while I feel it other people treat me like I don't belong here in many big and small ways and so when other people also um, also treat me like I belong here then that makes me feel really settled welcome grounded more confident all of those things so yeah that that would be my answer to the question but anyone else what would help you increase your sense of belonging Yeah, yeah. No, no, you please first. No, it's honestly just to follow on from Andrew, it's a big one. I would like, I'd, I'd like, I'd like policies and I'd like the media to change actually. That's, that's a big one. I want to stop being represented as a one dimensional character, like, you know, you know, see the headscarf. Ah, uh, we know what she's about. I know it sounds sorry to get on a soapbox here, but I think it's that. I think it's about being treated as an, an individual and just people seeing you and and look, you're here, you want to provide a benefit, you want to interact. Um, and sometimes you're shut down, right? And I think it's just that, just I think sensible of belonging really, it's just people having a bit more of an open mind about who you are and, and the fact that you actually are not here to stop you having Christmas people or having your bacon sandwiches. It's not about that. Let's have a chat, let's have a cup of tea. We're gonna, you're gonna see we're all worried about the bills and you know how to bring up our kids. That's it, basically. There you go. I'm off my sidewalk. Sorry, Leo. No, nah, it's all right. I would just, I would just add that finding the people who empower you, it's, it's very meaningful, and it helped me a lot. You know, because I carry an accent, and I, and I don't look like the people around here, so I felt very insecure working at the school, talking to the kids, and thinking that they would not accept, or even the teachers, because there's a lot of ego in the educational system. You know, and then instead of going that way, I chose to go the other way and, and connect to the people who were telling me, man, you got your character, you know, like you are who you are and accept that. And, and it's awesome. Connect and go hard. So I think finding these people that support you, it's it's very important. And do the same to the others, because if it feels good for you, it will feel good for them, too. Awesome. Yeah, that's a lovely message. Any, anyone else want to? Just, um, sorry, just, um, yeah, just echoing. And I think like um, when you think of Tūranga Waiwai, it is quite a personal thing, but it doesn't have to be influenced. And I think that's why it's, it's really good around saying that it's more than just something that you yourself can cultivate and make meaning from. It's actually something that your environment also needs to complement. And so I really um, total what, um, what everyone has said before me <laughs> around that um, there is a piece, I guess, for yourself in terms of recognizing uh, what brings you joy, what brings you um, that sense of empowerment. But there's also a piece around um, where am I? <laughs> how can I contribute? And how are they also do, um, providing those opportunities for me to um to get that affirmation, to get that um, that broader scope of who the multitudes of people, basically. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that's so important, that notion of being able to reciprocate reciprocity, being able to give something. And, and when people have barriers to that, and they could be any types of barriers because you don't have much to give right now, you're still settling, you're, you're in poverty, you don't know the language, you, you know, all the things. Um, when we are able to step up and contribute and have that contribution received with, with welcome, um, I think that, yeah, that, that's a great, um, great concept that several of you have talked about. Um, 
there's I'll, I'll move on to the next question because this this will be the last question because we kind of are getting towards the end of time so um you know, we've, we've talked about the people before us, Whakapapa, um, our genealogy, and, and how that builds into belonging. But what can we do to create and support that Tūranga Waiwai for the people that follow us um, and the people that will be following in our footsteps? So any thoughts on that? I would, well, I would say that in embracing your your own culture, embracing who you are, um, is the best example that you can give to others. You know, I know that's because I work with children, so um, sometimes you try to say a lot of things to them, and you hope that they're gonna get it. But at the end of the day, they're paying attention to what you're doing <laughs> more than what you're saying. So yeah, it, it sounds a bit broad, but I, in my view, it's, it's just being legit and really owning up to, to what you are. It's, it's been helping me. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Kiriana. Yeah, um, I can remember you know, when, I, when I worked in the Ministry of Ed and they were looking at the curriculum, this was early 2000, and our manager just went around and said, you know, what is it that we'd like? And I, and I thought, and I immediately thought of my two children. And I wondered why I've done what I've done with them and probably traumatised them in many ways, moving all over the place and taking them back to where I was from and sending them to where their father was from. Um, so they get a sense of it all about who they are. And I guess what I said to them is that, you know, what I want for my children is I want them to know who they are and like who they are and use that as a foundation to contribute to the world in a really wonderful way. And that, by that, I mean being respectful, being caring and kind. And that I also wanted um, them um, to be, and whatever they did, to be strongly values driven. And I think that, um, you know, and so that that is what I probably still stand by now. And I, but I really want my, you know, I, I did really want them to feel that 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 they have they have mana. You know, they they can stand in their own power, but in doing that, to be to be caring about that and not impinge on others and not, you know, not not be mean to others, not be a-holes at the end of the day, but to be really good, decent people. And now that they have grown and you know, one's 35 and one's 38, and when I talk about people ask things, and I say, Well, you know, one of the things I'm most proud of is or two one that I could have healthy children without too much trouble I think that's but I think also I'm so proud of the two young caring men that my boys have grown up and how I see them caring and relating and communicating with their partners and so that warms my heart and that's probably my proudest um, that when I talk of them is how good they are at taking care of themselves and their partners. Thank you, Kiriana. Um, well, this has been an amazing session. Thank you, everyone. Unfortunately, we're going to have to move to closing. Um, we do have um, a couple of other questions that we haven't been able to get to, but fear not. This is a series. Um, so our next session is on the 25th of March at the same time. Um, so if you've really enjoyed this session, um, we'll save those questions up to, to build into the next hui. But also please do um, promote these um, to your communities and, and your networks. We really appreciate um, the more people that can be part of this kōrero and can start building these conversations out into their communities. Um, it, we think it's really important uh, and a strong starting point as well for talking about tiatiriti, for citizenship rights, as Kiriana talked about, um, and, and those issues around roles, rights and responsibilities. Um, and I thought it was really interesting, um, some of the common themes that were coming out around connection, people, relationships, nature, um, and, and even when people couldn't find specific places, uh, you know, those connections to nature or the imagery or icon of trees or, or nature that was coming up um, was, was really common. 
Um, so I uh, thank you all to my lovely guests. You've been amazing and wonderful. And thank you for the thought and care that you've put into your presentations. Um, and I'm going to finish off with a closing karakia. Um, unuhia, unuhia. Unuhia ki te uru tapu nui. Kia watia, kia mama, te ngā kau, te tinana, te wairua i te ara takata. Koia rā e rongo, whakaira ake ki runga. Kia tina, tina, hui e, tai ki e. Thank you everyone. Ka kite.